morning to all. Are you welcome to participate in this holy Eucharistic celebration? Let's begin this mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, to my fault, to my fault, to my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the best Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Be present to your family, O Lord, we pray, and graciously ensure those you have endured with the grace of faith and eternal share in the resurrection of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Glory to you, O Lord. The disciples from Emmaus told what had happened on the road and how they knew he was the Lord when he broke the bread. While Jesus' disciples were talking about what had happened, Jesus appeared to them and said, May God give you peace. They were frightened and terrified because they thought they were seeing a ghost. But Jesus said, Why are you so frightened? Why do you doubt? Look at my hands and my feet and see who I am. Touch me and find out for yourselves. Ghosts don't have flesh and bones as you see I have. After Jesus said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. The disciples were so glad and amazed that they could not believe it. Jesus then asked them, Do you have something to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it as they watched. Jesus said to them, While I was still with you, I told you that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the books of the prophets, and in the Psalms had to happen. Then he helped them understand the scriptures. He told them, the scriptures say that the Messiah must suffer. Then three days later, he will rise from death. They also say that all people of every nation must be told in my name to turn to God in order to be forgiven. So beginning in Jerusalem, you must tell everything that has happened. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Um. My dear blessed sisters in Christ, and you, my dear children, Today's readings challenges us to adjust our lives to the living presence of the risen Lord as we grow daily more aware of God's presence within us and all around us as the Holy Spirit. This awareness should strengthen our hope in His promises, bring us to true repentance for our sins and the renewal of our lives and lead us to bear witness to Christ by our works of charity. The readings also remind us that the purpose of the suffering, death and resurrection of Jesus was to save us from our sins. In the hours and days that followed the resurrection, the pervading atmosphere amongst the disciples was fear. They were fearful as followers of Jesus crucified that the Jewish authorities would find them and punish them severely. Gathered together in a room, they see the ghost-like figure of Christ. How can he be alive? They see the wounds in his hands and side. Fear and doubt take hold of them. Remembering their own betrayal of Jesus despite all their promises to be faithful, they wonder if Christ has returned for vengeance and retribution. Then they hear the wonderful transformative words of Jesus, Peace be with you, not once but twice. Their fear disappears for there is no retribution or vengeance in his heart 
only love and compassion. In today's Gospel, we heard that Jesus opened the minds of the disciples to understand the scriptures and all that these are meant to reveal. They are meant to reveal above all that God raised up Jesus after his terrible suffering and cruel death and that in his name repentance and forgiveness would be preached to all the nations beginning in Jerusalem. The disciples are to preach forgiveness of sins. We are all sinners, but because we belong to Christ, we are now saved, forgiven sinners. It is vital to accept this about ourselves and others. The reason Christ told his disciples to begin their preaching of the good news, the offer of his peace and forgiveness beginning with those living in Jerusalem, then to those in the towns and countryside and finally to all the world. He invites us to realize that the place to seek for peace is first of all at the center of our own lives, then in our immediate personal world, and then beyond. We make our impact where we can and then we let the ripples spread outwards. Let us not despair of the dark clouds and the seeming impossibility of peace and justice in our world today, but start by promoting justice in one's own life and avoid surrendering to the darkness. When the risen Lord appeared to the frightened and confused disciples, they wondered if he were a ghost, but he quickly moves to reassure them by taking a piece of grilled fish and eating it. It is not something very ordinary. God continues to appear in our daily life in very ordinary ways. God wants to open our eyes to the presence of the risen Christ in the ordinary happenings of life. It is in the small things that the everyday details of life, the moments of caring and sharing when we reach out to others, that we show that Christ is risen among us. The risen Christ is not apart from the world. He is in our midst, not controlled by religious language and practices. Then Jesus asked them to touch his wounds. Needless to say, they are not any old wounds. They are the wounds the world inflicts on those who love God above all else. They are the wounds of those who live for others rather than for themselves. Jesus didn't hide his wounds because they were the price of his love. Neither did Jesus become embittered because of his wounds. Our own wounds maybe are those caused by betrayals by others. Things like disappointments, ingratitude, being taken for granted, etc. His wounds give us hope in our wounds. A personal faith in the resurrection of Jesus does not happen instantly. It has to be woven into the fabric of life. We have to live the gospel before we get to know the person behind the words. As St. John says, anyone who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments is a liar. Hence, my dear friends and children in Christ, we will never know how to swim, for instance, by reading books and swimming. We have to put the book down and get into the water. We will never become fluent in language unless we start speaking it. We will never be a witness to the resurrection of Christ unless our thoughts 
words and actions are motivated by love. And finally, I bring forward Blessed Mother Teresa of Calcutta used to say that the greatest hunger in this world is not for food but for love and peace. May God bless us all. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bishop Powers and all the priests and teachers as they help us to learn more about Jesus. We praise the Lord. Lord. Today's Mass of James Postman, let's pray to the Lord. God of love and glory, you raised Christ Jesus from the dead. Help us always to place our hope in your power over death and keep us ever on the path to life. To the same Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we end this with us to bless our diocese with many priests, brothers, sisters, and deacons who will love you with their whole mind and heart and gladly spend their entire lives serving your church and making you known and loved. Bless our families, bless our children and choose from our homes those needed for your Lord. Mary, Queen of the Clergy, pray for us, pray for our priests, religious and deacons, obtain for us many more. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual dream. Kindly rise up. Let us pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice at our hands. In the praise of God of His name, and our good and good of all His holy church. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life, Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exults in our praise. And even the heavenly powers, with the angelic force, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. so that they may become for us the body and bread of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in our presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and bread of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with our Pope Francis, James our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, our spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be a co-host eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Lord be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in our cities in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of us. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be saved. which will come in and pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. Since I am unable at this moment to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as being already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
and you rise up Here, O Lord, our prayers that this most holy exceeds by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness through Christ our Lord The Lord be with you May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Have a great day.